Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the Quick Brain. So today I want to talk about how you can actually save the plot you did in R in the image that is both high resolution and high DPI. So this is very important when you're submitting to a particular journal which have a very particular DPI and resolution requirements on the figure that you have done. And secondly, I also want to talk about how you can combine different plot into a single image file. So you just have to submit that one image file into both uh, your document processor or actually submit that file to the publisher because sometimes they, they will not combine it for you. You have to do it yourself. And rather than actually uh, export them one by one and then rejoin them in Microsoft PowerPoint like I did last time, which is a terrible way to do things. So by the end of the video, you should be able to, to generate something that you have seen on the bottom right corner, as well as you know trying to merge image of different size and uh, make something that it looks nicer on your report by the end of the day. Okay, so I also taken most of the code and modified them from one of the blog posts over there from our bloggers and you can actually get the original website from the second line of the script and you can also get the script from my GitHub page which you can find the link in the video description down below. Okay, so first thing first, how do you plot uh, a graph in R? So the easiest way is to just uh, put plot, open br close bracket and put the name of your data frame in the middle. Okay, I'm using the Iris data set, just flowers data, don't do care too much about here. So if you press plot on the particular data frame, you actually plot out the bivariant um, scatter plot between every single of the parameters. So in this case, a five column uh, data set will actually have a 25 different plotting and depends on whether it's numeric, whether it's factor, characters, they'll, they'll try to figure that out and plot it out for you. And if they're not able to, you will get an error. Okay. So first thing first, uh, how do I save this image? The easiest way if you're using RStudio is actually use one of the export button over here, just save as image, and you can choose whatever um, uh, format that you want, BMP, JPG, and change the file name, change the directory, change the resolution, and you can just save, and it will save as a file. Uh, it's great. You can also actually save as a PDF if you want to, or just copy it to your clipboard if you need it to do a fast copy paste here and there. Uh, this is great, but it, it poses a problem when you say you want to run a for loop of 100 different sample and you want to visualize them all at the same time and you want to download that as an image file. So that become kind of a problem because you have to save as 100 times and if you change one parameter, you have to do that 100 times all over again. So how can you do that in base R is actually use something called a device command. I'm not too sure it's called device, but you, you get the idea. So what you do is that you open, first of all, a JPEG device where you open a blank canvas in JPEG, you plot the iris data set, and then you close the device. So what this essentially do is that you open a blank canvas, the plot, you throw it in, you close off the device, and you wrap it in rubber band, and it will save as a file into your directory. So if you don't know where is your directory, you can get the get wd command, open close bracket, press enter, and this will show you the directory that is, it's currently safe to. So the other way, of course, is to use the rstudio command on the bottom right. You can actually find the directory on the files tab. Okay, so just find whatever that you name it just now, which is myplot.jpg. You can go to myplot.jpg, press it, and you should be able to get your image as a JPEG over here. However, it's not the best way to do it and it, it kind of lacks the control that I really want. And you can kind of only, it, it's kind of janky because it's three lines just to do one thing. So what I usually use is actually called ggsave. So ggsave is part of the ggplot universe and actually part of the other tidyverse as well, so something like that. Okay, so what does it do is that you just save whatever you have that you plot last time. So I have put the syntax over here, but essentially how to use it is that you just uh, create a ggplot onto your R. You can run it in the console directly, or you can use uh, the script file like me, and you, but remember you have to print the R out in order for it to work. Okay, so what you do is that gg save, and then you put the file name in, and you put the extension that you want. You want a JPEG, you get it. You want a PNG, there you get it. You want a TIFF, you get it. And you want a PDF, there you get it. Finish, end of story. So you don't have to create multiple devices just to do all this 
or this thing, and you can save it in the very in a very simple single line command. And GG Save also allow um well technically base hours also allow this, but the way of how you adjust the width and height and unit in GG Save, I feel like it's also easier. So in this case, the first example, you can see that the width is 10 cm, the height is 8 cm, and you can change the unit in cm. So if you live, if you if you are inside one of the few countries in the world like US and Myanmar, and you want to change to inch, you can just change the cm into inch directly, and it should work exactly the same. Which it now it will export the whole image in inches. So it will also allow you to change the DPI directly. Just add an argument DPI equals to how many that you need, and you can just run. Okay, and then you can go back to your file, and you can see there are all the different file format over here. So let's just put the G JPEG over here. Okay, so now you get your file. Very easy, very straightforward. Okay, so now we are done with the basic save. How do we combine different file? Uh, sorry, different plot into a single file so that we can we can actually save them as a single image at the same time. So there are multiple ways again, but we'll always start with the most basic. How to do it in base R? Okay, so with the with the concept just now, this is very similar. You open a JPEG canvas or you open a JPEG device and you use the command called par. So par, I have no idea what it stands for, but what it does is that you can see there's an MFROWC12, means one row, two column. You're opening a table with one a single row, but two different columns on the left and right. And then you just plot your first one. So this will put the plot into the first table and this will, the second plot, you put it in the second table, and then you close off the device. So and so similar to what we've done in the earlier just now, this will save the 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 plot as base R multiple. So if we open the file, you should be able to see that you have two plots, left and right, both of histogram of a normal distribution of two hundred data point. Okay, but again, I I don't really like to use base R. And I usually what I do is to use a different package called ggpubr. Okay, I'm though I'm not sure what pubr stands for. Leave a comment if you know what that's the full name of that stands for. So very similar to ggsave just now, you just save four different objects as different names. So we have four objects over here of four different plot of pqrs respectively. Okay, and then you just do something we call GG arrange. So GG arrange put in however number of elements that you want. In this case, we have four elements, P, Q, R, S, and we label the four elements as A, B, C, D, because usually in a scientific article, they are labeled as A, B, C, D. That's why I do it. Okay, then you can put the number of rows that you want, which is two columns and two rows, and there's four different plots. And then when you press GG arrange, that will actually show up here in your plot. And you can see uh, everything works perfectly. And then you use uh, GG Save to again save the file into your computer very easily. So if you open the file, GG PUBR Save over here, you can see it's exactly the same as what we have viewed just now. Of course, the height and width is slightly different because I, I, I put it as 20 and 16 over here. You can feel free to change it around and see if it works for you. Okay, so GGPUR is of course not the only way if you want to have more control on what you, how you want it to present it. Okay, GG arrange kind of have like a square, it's kind of squarish. So if you want to say I want one big, one small, or two small, one big, uh, cow plot is a, uh, it's a, it's a great package to use. But again, you have to install another package. So what you do is actually use a gg draw command where you draw pqr uh, into a new canvas, you know, kind of like that. Okay, then you can define the the width of the the object. So what essentially means is that you can customize where do you want the the thing to go and what size do they have to be. So if I run this, you can actually see you will get something like this, where the first one, P, will only on the bottom left corner, B will be on the bottom right corner, and R over here will actually go for the, the below corner. Okay, so um, I'm not going to explain it in depth because it's going to take like 20 minutes. So what I want you to do is to go around and change the X and the Y and see how it changes. Then you will be able to understand how to actually use this to manipulate different, 
different uh, different way of doing things. Okay, so basically this is one, this is one point five means half, something like that. Okay, so same thing. You can label it as ABC with a different size, and then you can put the the what is that called the the size of x and y and the label of it, and with this command again, delete it and see what happens. That's how you understand. Okay, and once you are done, again use gg save and you will get the image over here gg count plots draw. Okay, so this will get the image that you want. So uh, the last part will be a little bit more complicated, and I actually copied this directly from the website. So I'm just gonna walk you through how they do it. Okay. So the first one is actually plot a scatter plot. So this is very similar to how we did our object just now, just that uh, with that, it looks a little bit nicer. Okay, you can again use SP to see what I have drawn. So this is the base uh, scatter plot that I have. Okay, second, we are drawing the marginal density plot. So density plot means um, from uh, X exists, where which part of the X axis has the most data, and y plot means which part of the y axis has the most data. So it's kind of what you do the density. It, 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 well, for the name suggests the density plot. So x plot is actually looks somewhat like this, and y plot it looks somewhat like this. So y p l o t have not run it. Okay, so y plot looks something like this. Okay, very similar basically. Okay, now. Of course, the y to y plot they need to rotate it because when they rotate it, you know it will on, be on the side of the plot. You will see why later. Okay, again we use uh, x plot to clean team. So what does that mean? Is that it, it will clean up whatever unnecessary that is on the on the plot that you don't want to. So it, it's not technically necessary in this case, but it makes the outlook much cleaner than 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 overall. So you do not want any unnecessary elements that are still in the plot. So so this is a little bit more complicated. Okay, so how does that work? Is that GG arrange? Remember from just now, it's trying to put all together. Okay, so in this case, we're creating an array or a table with two columns and two rows. The first one, you have an X plot, which is your X exist density. You have your now, which is nothing. The third one, you have your SP, which is your main scatter plot. And the last one, you have a Y plot. So one, two, three, four. X is here, this is nothing, the scatter plot and Y is here. So if you once you're done, you can actually see this is what you get. Okay, so this is plot one, plot two on the right, which is empty. This is represented by the now here. You have the scatter plot, and then you have your y axis over here. So the rest just control the, the width and the height of the whole arrangement. And you have the last one, which is a common legend. So if you don't have a common legend, uh, the species will be individually plot and you have uh, three copies of it, which is kind of confusing. So usually common legend is much easier to see this plot as one of the single one. Again, not going into detail, uh, change it and or you can, if you want, I will also put the the, the syntax, the, the crane package documentation in the video description down below where you can also read it over there. But easiest way, just, just go in and change a few parameters and see what happens. So that's basically what I want to say today. So how would you able to save the image uh, from R of your plot? And how do you save it as a high DPI file, high resolution file? And lastly, how do you combine different plot and then save them? So again, you can download everything, uh, including the plot that I generated in the GitHub uh, link down below. For now, I will see you next week. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.